Um, I, I have a number of things that I want to um, discuss with you uh, before we launch into this new subject, entirely new and uh, rather refreshing subject being audio, uh, most particularly audio editing. Uh, but before I go there, I want to get my own handout uh, up in front of all of us, because uh, it always helps me make sure that um, I'm being thorough and not skipping anything important. All right. So I want to say a couple things right off the bat because I've been getting email um, uh, from a number of people for different reasons, and that's great. But I just want to say this is the email address for your class. And early in the semester, I kept repeating it, and I really thought everybody would be used to it. Uh, but it seems that few people are using it, and they're sending it to my BMCC email. So I, I just want to just appeal to you for a moment. I don't know about you, but I get... I don't know, 15, 20 emails to that address per day, and they're mostly junk mail, you know, just the equivalent of junk mail. And um, I have 50 students at this school and 50 at another school, and it's really hard for me to be sure that I get the important emails from folks like you. And that's why I created a class-specific email. Um, so really, you should feel free to reach me, but um, I just don't always get to the BMCC email because it's huge. You know, so really, I skip a couple days. I go from the bottom and I chew my way through it. But this email, um, when I'm ready to check on this specific class, as I do typically a couple times a week, you're guaranteed that you're going to hear back from me. You know, you're not mixed in there with a pile of junk. Uh, so please take note of this email address that I'm circling here. Um, uh, is my screen sharing working? Is everybody seeing it? Gotcha. So please, I, I heard from several of you today in the wrong email address, and I, I felt bad that I didn't get back to you sooner. So that's the first thing that I want to say. Second thing that I want to say is I've been away for several days and have not checked email at all until the last half hour, and I've not really been able to get uh, to all of them. So if you've been waiting to hear from me about something urgent, I do apologize for the delay. <clears throat> Academia is run by adjuncts right now, right? And uh, we get paid for a small amount of hours and all the other hours we do a voluntary I do many voluntary hours but now and then I got to take off for a few days so um, if you haven't heard back from me you will soon uh, if you want to increase your chances of hearing back in a timely way please use that email address that I made just for you all right I want to say a couple other things that are very timely before we move into the new material so I the, the grades for the uh, project behind us are online, the, the project from class four. Uh, the midterm um, grades are not online yet. So let me just repeat that. The earlier project from class four was an easy kind of small HTML project, HTML CSS project. The grades are online on Blackboard. Um, you should check Blackboard and see uh, if you're sure you submitted it, that you got a grade. It was rather easy to get 100 for that particular homework. Uh, so if you got a low grade, uh, you know, you might want to consult with me and see if there's any way that you could bring that grade back up. Give me just one second. I'm admitting somebody. Um, so again, check Blackboard. If there's any chance you've gotten no grade in that slot where it says something like class four assignment, uh, you have to write me immediately if you think that you sent it in. I'm an open-minded guy and I'll usually make room. Uh, in fact, it's such a strange year, uh, 2020, that I'm more open than usual to late work. Uh, I'm usually very uptight about late work after a week late, uh, but this semester is strange. So if somehow you just kind of blew it, any of you did, uh, send me an email and I might just approve you sending it to me now, even though it's, it's rather far behind us. 2020 should earn us all a lot of leeway, so I'm offering it. But you have to check Blackboard. If I hear from you like in three weeks, hey, why didn't I get anything on Blackboard? I'm like, wow, not only did I not receive it, but you didn't even bother to check Blackboard after I announced its importance. Uh, I'm probably going to say, no, you got a zero. You know? You're know, going to have to do very well on the other projects. right? So just check. I'm on your side. It's still fresh because I just graded them. Just be sure that if you need to respond to me, that you do. You do it by email, and you use this email address. Okay. So that's about the earlier project. 
The only project since was the much larger and far more significant midterm project, which was due on Sunday. So today's Tuesday, right? That should have been in uh, by Sunday at midnight. And I did get a peak, right? So it looks like, a, it looks like if not everybody, mostly everybody has indeed done it. I didn't look at them, right? So it wasn't that kind of peak. But, you know, just to see that people were on the ball and it looked very promising, right? So again, um, if you're confident you put it in, just give me a little, a little bit of time because obviously I have not graded them yet. I haven't just gotten back in town yesterday, right? All right. So just keep your eye on that stuff, all right? You want, look, there's going to be four or five projects this semester. You really want to get them all in. You want to do your best. The midterm and final project will be weighted heavier. I'll explain what that means later. But it just means they carry more power toward your final grade than, say, that little homework in, in class four. Anybody have any homeworks about <laughs> homeworks? Any questions about homework or the midterm? No. So um, also, I did write back to a couple of you just in the last half hour. Um, so, uh, you know, please just double check your email. I, I don't really like to respond to personal emails in front of the class. And if anyone, uh, you know, needed an extension for some special reason, I always would prefer to discuss it via email than I would in front of every, everybody. Um, I do have an appointment with one of you. I'm going to remind myself. <laughs> Did I make an appointment with one of you guys? Could you just remind me right now? I know that I did, but the, the, the name suddenly escapes me. It doesn't look like. So if not, all right, I'll, I'll look that up. I'll take a brief pause toward the end. All right, let me just check one more thing. I want to check the chats before we move forward. Give me just one second. You know, that's not what I'm best at. Gotcha. Um, so um, Isaiah, I guess we'll do that right after class. Let's talk, talk then. Guys, I do want to say again, as I say each week, unless you've already explained to me why your camera's typically off, please turn it on, right? Uh, this class requires the cameras on, except in extenuating circumstances. It's not personal choice. It's my camera broke or that kind of thing. Otherwise, your camera needs to be on. All right. So look, I I'm really excited about where we're headed. Right, and I'm hoping that everybody in here has already loaded Audacity. I sent the group an email uh, through that feature in Blackboard, but it all went to your BMCC email. So I don't know how often you check your BMCC email. This is the point where the teacher's supposed to go, hey, you check that email every day. I know the reality of it. You probably have other email addresses, and again, there, there's a lot of junk mail. Um, but I'm not willing to take private email addresses from all 100 to 200 of my students. So I have to do it through your school email address. So I sent that out last week. Hey, can you guys let me either, either know through a physical thumbs up or an emoji, you know, reactions, thumbs up? Uh, how many of you already loaded Audacity? All right, that's looking like the vast majority. So um, if you have not loaded Audacity, right? You could do it while I talk, do your best. I'm not here to troubleshoot the loading of Audacity right now because most of the class has already done it. And if you had done it early, right, you could have let me know that it didn't work, unless I'm missing a beat here. Because uh, I did, like I said, speed read through the email this morning and no, no one complained about it. I will say this will be on YouTube later. So if you're having trouble loading Audacity today, uh, join the class, see what you can, and if you need to watch it again, it will be online uh, shortly by the evening, all right? All right, I want to look at the handout uh, together with you. I was just looking at you guys and uh, just see what, what it is that I need to tell you about. Again, just quickly, for anyone who didn't get to it, these are sort of the shortcuts to the Mac part of uh, getting Audacity and the Windows part. There's all kinds of support stuff that makes it look more complicated than it is. Uh, just do your best if you didn't get it to load before. We are gonna be using it very soon. I wanna remind you that uh, earbuds or headphones are gonna be really useful today, right? And uh, you know, I have taught this online, um, was it once or maybe twice? I think I might've done it twice. 
But twice is not enough for me to feel expert about how audio, an audio class is going to affect us through Zoom as, as you're listening to my audio and then your own audio. So I may need feedback from you when things are not working or they are working or you have a better idea of how to do this. Uh, you, frankly, you know, your teachers who feel the most expert, like you know me when I'm rocking, it basically means that I've taught that a gazillion times. So, uh, you know, uh, fluent in that. Everything's changed a little, you know, via Zoom these days. But I really do love um, sound editing and sound design. So let me begin by talking a little bit about sound editing and sound design. We're going to do a chunk of today together, hands on. Um, so that's exciting to me. But I want to tell you how I, how I perceive my, the mission. So I am not an audio engineer, right? I, I am not equipped to go out there and apply for jobs at a, at a uh, record company, to use an old, you know, old term as the uh, sound producer. I'm not going to produce the next, you know, superstars record or um, CD or MP3s or any of the like. So what do I do? And, 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 and what gives me the sheer audacity to teach a program called Audacity today? Well, you know, I'm a multimedia artist and I often need audio. So I want to be blind. I, I have recorded uh, two records. I'm a bit of a musician. They're not publicly released currently. Uh, if anyone's interested, and I change that by the end of the semester, I'll let you know. Um, uh, but my weakest point on that front is as a producer. You know, like I, it's really a separate set of skills. The person who could really go in there and dig deep on every track musically. But it does give me experience in, in the software. Uh, beyond that, I do a lot of animation, which a bunch of you guys already know. Um, as a multimedia artist. So I often do have to edit sound for my animation, which is very often my own voice, uh, very often my own voice doing different parts or the, the voices of people I could coerce into doing audio for me, right? And that's really important. Uh, we're gonna start with something very similar to that. If you were recording your voice, what would you need to do to clean it up and, and make it sound its best? Let me throw one last um, element in there. Um, podcasts, you know, podcasts. So, you know, the, the podcast that's done well sounds just like old fashioned FM radio. I don't know if any of you guys ever listen to the radio because even my generation doesn't really do a hell of a lot of it. Uh, but it's sort of the history of voice based broadcast. I'm leaving AM radio out because it stinks. So I'm just getting FM radio. So, you know, it, you know, I often kid around and make believe like I'm a radio announcer. Say, Welcome to MMP 100 and stuff like that. And then and, and I use my voice that way. People, people have pointed out to me in, in the industry what a guy like me would do with the particular voice that I have. And when I edit, I edit according to that. What can I do? What can I bring out uh, in my own voice that has value from an audio perspective? And you might consider doing the same. Maybe not after today, maybe after Thursday, you know, get a little experience with the assets I'm delivering. And then if you like the idea, um, do your own voice uh, and, and work with that. So let me back up. So that means if you're comfortable finessing, um, augmenting, enhancing your own voice recordings, you could use it for any number of things. Yes, podcast, if you have, if you want to preach the good word, whatever that is for you, you know, uh, politics, philosophy, art, whatever it may be. Uh, but definitely, I know a few of you are animators and you know, it's gonna come a point where you get the voices from if you're working on short form animations. Um, quick word, by the way, uh, I follow a number of animators on Instagram who are experts at short form. And I mean like five, six seconds uh, and they tell these mini stories in five, six seconds, and most often with their own voices. Uh, some of them produce a full animation every day, one a day, you know, which is pretty staggering output. Uh, and and they're, they're cleaning up their own voices in something just like Audacity. I know I have a number of video students too. Video students, absolutely. You know, one of my close friends is uh, uh, Beverly Peterson. Um, often narrates her own documentaries and, and she's wildly popular. You know, New York Times reviewed, HBO, you know, um, 
public broadcasting. They're all, all over her movies, and, and she does use her own voice. So that's where we're starting. We're going to start with voice. If there's a little bit of extra time today, uh, if there is, I would like to bring in a soundtrack to back up the voice. So this is very podcast, you know, very radio talk show kind of vibe um, that we're going to aim at today. All right. Let me get a look at my own handout because, again, I'm looking at you guys. I don't, and uh, um, I want to mention a couple quick things. You know, before we dive in, I, I do want to mention this little tech part that I forgot to mention. Um, you know, I, I'm on a Mac, and uh, I know less about Windows. I know enough to use the machines, but uh, it's not part of my daily life. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are going to be using Bluetooth um, earbuds today. Um, anybody going to be going Bluetooth today? Oh, no. S strangely, when, when I do this in the classroom, there's always a bunch of people with, you know, those little mini Bluetooth uh, earbuds, which would work fine. But you just have to work a little bit harder to make sure you're disconnecting your computer, um, or rather your phone, because most people have it connected to their phone, that they disconnect it first from the phone uh, before your computer will let you connect. Uh, but since no one's raising their hand, and, and I have to say, I'm again, here's, here's all I got. On the Mac, these are the steps I follow. If I want audacity, to use my earbuds, my Bluetooth earbuds. Today, I'm not going to go Bluetooth. I'm going to use an old-fashioned. Um, these are Bluetooth capable, but I'm going to plug them in just because it's easier. I, I apologize, Windows people. It feels so unfair that I can't go into the same detail for Windows. Right? Uh, most people can't. They know their own platform best. Uh, so uh, I'm not used to a classroom that's me. But we'll manage. I guarantee you. Last, oh, yeah. Look, if you don't have earbuds with you uh, anywhere in your home or wherever it is you're working today or, or headphones, you'll be fine. You know, you'll actually be better than we would in the classroom. And in the classroom, I always say we'll be fine because the classroom gets noisy. But here you could always mute your audio. So at least you, don't, you just won't be disturbing anyone else. But let me point something out. As uh, clearly a few of you already know who always use headphones, there's just no fidelity coming out of the speakers of your laptops or your other computers the sound just stinks you know i i uh i know a number of people listen to music on the speaker on their little iphone and i'm a bass player by the way and to me it's just like ah i can't listen to that there's no bottom end it's like listening to me it's so shrill hearing anything where the bottom is is gone and uh, really your phones and your computers they just don't have any bottom so uh yes if you got headphones, you might as well get them ready, right? I'm going to be using mine. And again, let's hope for a little bit of luck, because I don't know if Zoom is going to give us a hard time for sure. All right. So before we get to that, um, boy, when people walk around in Zoom, it's so compelling. Yeah, isn't it? It's like moving camera in a movie. I'm fascinated by the moving camera in movies. Anyway. <laughs> So I want to talk to you just a little bit about software before we launch into our chosen software. First off, can I ask, are any of you guys audio engineers? <laughs> I, I don't think so, but every now and then I'll get somebody that came to this class for other reasons, but they've been doing audio for like 10, 15 years. Has any of you done any audio editing whatsoever? Be honest. That's what I thought, because some of you have that face that goes with this. <laughs> so look, if you come up with something when I'm teaching, hey, Ira, I got this great idea about such and such, please jump in. You know, like I've said, really, I, my version of audio engineering is always for a, an, an additional purpose. It's not, uh, you know, nine to five audio engineering, but I think we're going to learn a lot today. I think you're going to enjoy it. All right, let me move on to something that I do need to talk about a little bit about other sound editing programs. You notice I got a little list going on the handout. It says Pro Tools, Logic, Fruity Loops, Audacity, and there's many more. There's no equivalent to Photoshop. You know what I mean? Like you're talking photo editing, everybody's like Photoshop. And yes, there are other things, but Photoshop is, as we know already, is, is king and king for many good reasons. Um, it's not the same in audio. It's not the same in video, which comes next. 
you know, by the way. So um, we really could have chosen any number of options. A lot of schools use Audacity because it's free and it's good enough that it's taken fairly seriously, even in, in professional environment. I, I want to be, you know, thorough for a moment. Um, so I use, um, did I even list Logic? Yes, I did. So I've, I've used Logic the most out of the ones on my little list. Logic is made by Apple and uh, I have not used it really, to be honest with you, in the past year. So don't start asking me questions about it, but I could tell you a little bit about why I made that choice. Logic is used by a lot of audio professionals, and I'm talking about musicians as well as broadcast people. Um, it's made by Apple, and Apple's become really good at their software, really, really good. And, and what's special about it? But let me talk music for a minute. Um, for one, it's capable of receiving any electronic instruments that, you, that a musician may have. Uh, also, it has a massive library of legal loops that you could use in other sound effects. So, um, and I'm talking about Logic, again, it's an Apple product. So in other words, it has sirens, it has crying, it has laughing, it has traffic, it has bird and wind and, and thunderstorms. And a lot of door slamming and balloons popping and, and, and engines being started up, a uh, car passing. Uh, so it's, it's fabulous. Uh, I don't know if there are musicians in the room, but with a small device, uh, if anyone's interested, I'll, I'll get mine for Thursday to show you what it looks like. I could plug in instruments uh, okay. as an interface and, and run right in the software. So Logic is more music um, centric, music driven, than um, meaning that you could record into it. You know, Audacity, which we're going to use, also lets you record into it, right? And I think it's often used for voice uh, because you could use the mic right on your computer. Um, do people actually record music into it? Honestly, I don't know. You know, I've not used it for that particular purpose. I use Audacity mostly for voice myself, but I will use it to mix music that's already been recorded you know, so that basically means if you've gotten hold of a few different tracks of sound and you want to mix them into something useful for a multimedia project or any any similar project, yeah, sure enough, it rocks for that. It's just not made for actually recording. Well, don't quote me on this. You know, it's not famous for recording into uh, other than the voice. Anybody have any questions yet? M my coffee is kicked in big time, so I'm 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 going. <laughs> <laughs> my pedal so far <laughs> what's that and so far all right maybe later on when we get into the program and i'm gonna count on you jason so um i want to um just just quickly mention um fruity loops i've never seen or tried it's it, it is a, a popular program from the name of it it sounds like it leans on loop sure enough uh, a hip-hop producer i was kind of lucky to get to know he he leaned very hard in fruity loops I do want to say something about Pro Tools because it wouldn't be fair if I didn't. Pro Tools is gigantically popular. And the people I know who use it the most are in film. So they do sound for film, right? And that includes two different crowds, uh, soundtrack designers. So I'm talking musicians, you know, doing those gorgeous soundtracks for movies, as well as those that are actually uh, mixing, reworking, rethinking, all the sound that takes place in the movie itself. So bear with me. What am I even talking about? Well, let's say you're doing a movie that involves two people talking in a convertible car. You know, so you got your camera set up in the car. You know, you've got mounted cameras on the car looking right through the windshield even. You know, you're, you're rigged up like Hollywood, right? Um, and they're talking in the car on a highway with, with, with no hood. It's a convertible. There's no way you're going to hear a word. Those mics are going to sound like <laughs> all wind hitting the mic. So what they're going to do is what's called automatic dialogue replacement, ADR. And the, the thing about ADR is there's nothing automatic about it. I've, I've actually had to do it. Um, there's nothing automatic. You're going to take the, the audio out, right? Give the video to the audio technicians, bring the actors back in. And they're going to say their lines exactly the way they did the first time 
while watching themselves. And you know, professional actors are, are learn how to say their lines precisely the same over and over again for multiple takes, um, which is quite a skill. And I used to think of no way is that ever going to work. And then I had to do it with a couple people and it worked like a charm. Um, so that's Pro Tools Arena, you know, remixing all the sounds you might want. Oh, I need a siren. I need uh, the doors. I need all those things as well as music and the rest of it. It's all Pro Tools. I want to just say just a little bit more before we get into Audacity together. So I don't know really, to tell you the truth, what we do here at BMCC in the audio classes. Um, my last school was all about uh, Pro Tools and they had a massive sound um, lab that looked kind of like NASA, you know, where you'd launch rocket ships or something. And it was cool. You've all seen it, at least in the movies where there's all these sliders and kind of like a DJ on steroids looking situation. And, um, you know, uh, oh, let me just make sure that's not somebody waiting to get in, guys. Sorry. But, you know, that's happened a few times. It looks like we're good. Um, it's bigger. It's harder. It's complex, Pro Tools. It's hard to learn in a group. If you take a Pro Tools class, you want the smallest class you can get into. The fewest people. Everybody has to take turns on the equipment. And it involves hardware. So I just want to get that out of the way. If you wanted it, you're going into movies, you want to know Pro Tools, you're like, forget it. After I do some audacity with Iron, I'm going to go out and buy Pro Tools. Please do your research. You know, I don't use Pro Tools, so I'm not an expert. But you do need specific hardware, as far as I know, a special kind of mixing board. There may be ways to do it virtually, um, you know, meaning, you know, on your computer, equipment that looks just like the physical equipment. Uh, but, but I know in the real world, most people have hardware physical things to go with Pro Tools. So let me back up a minute. Those of you going into video are likely to have more exposure to Pro Tools, but it's hard to say how much. Do you know what I mean? Because frankly, that's an industry in itself, the sound experts. If I'm making something small, I'll do it all myself. But if I'm doing anything large, or frankly, I'm going to contact a friend of mine who lives in Singapore, <laughs> the other side of the planet. Uh, he, he's the expert. He's the Pro Tools expert. He can't shoot as well as me. He can't edit, video edit as well as me. But he beats me when it comes to sound. And frankly, that's the way animators are going to do it also. I'm layering too many ideas, so let me get past this overly long lecture. All the same, I really... Yes? Somebody trying to... Ah, hang on a second there. Let me just let... Somebody in. All right. Um, all the same, I'm a big advocate of guerrilla art making. You know, learning how to do everything you can in the area you like best. Um, I can name several movies that had miniature budgets uh, where one really crafty person worked with a lot of friends and, and became very successful. Um, but that does require putting your finger in almost every area of your art form. And that's kind of the way I've lived my life. And you just know when you're up to your limit and, and when you need a, a hand from somebody who's a specialist. I'm, I'm rather a generalist, right? So let me move forward. Um, so I do want to say again, audacity can be taken seriously. Uh, again, animators, filmmakers here, you guys especially. Uh, musicians, you might want to look elsewhere. After this, I, I go back and forth between music software and Audacity. No last questions before we dive in? All right. So I want to um, point something out. I'm going to um, download my assets today, make sure I've got some clean, clean assets. Let me just get a look here for a second. It's my uh, downloads folder. Um, I don't want anyone to be confused by the stuff that I have here. So let me just put it in there. And I'm coming back to the handout. I'm going to download my assets from here. So right under 1C. And just like it did during Photoshop and HTML and CSS, my, my zip is downloading here. That little arrow showed up in the lower left corner. And now I'm going to just click right on the name of the zip, Mac style. And I'm going to open this up. So folks, Windows people, at some point, if you've not been extracting the zips, 
but just been opening, just taking stuff directly out and it's working for you. I'd, I'd like to know about that because a lot of the assumptions I make about Windows was based on a very short time I had before COVID in uh, our Windows labs. I had to teach two classes in a Windows lab. So I did a lot of learning on my feet. In, in those classes, I had to use extract a lot, but I don't know. Maybe that was um, specific to those rooms for some weird reason. So I don't know. My nervous side wants everyone on Windows to extract that zip. <laughs> But I'm going to leave it up to you. Most of you who are on Windows now are probably better at that than I am. I want to point some things out that are in the folder before we get busy using them. So in my class 15 assets are several files, right? And the one we're going to be using together is called Fix It, right? But I want to show you guys something. And rather, I say I want to play you guys something. So if you do have headphones or earbuds, this is, this is the time if you're not already using them to um, you know, plug yourself in or set yourself up. Professor, you sound he sounds far. Say it again, please. You you sound extremely far. The second you plug that in, there's suddenly static. Yeah, there's static, and we can barely hear you. Yeah, we can almost not not hear you. Am I? Can you hear me now? Now, now you're good. So I, all now I can hear you now then is this. I'm going to have to plug him in and I'm going to have to go back and forth. And I, it's funny that I don't remember this. I do remember there being some kind of weird oddity going on when I taught this this summer. Um, maybe that was it. So I'm going to try to plug in, plug out. I'm going to need reminders because I, I am the quintessential absent-minded professor. So you, you may need to remind me now and then if I my voice just disappears at the wrong time. So um, I'm hoping this works for you. I'm going to play something here I want you to hear, right? And uh, I want you to compare something. The first one I'm going to play for you, just, just maybe 20, 30 seconds worth, is Fix It. And that is a file of me talking, uh, radio announcer style, but with no audio correction, right? So I'm plugging myself in because I want to hear it too. Evan, what was the no about? We, we can't hear it. I mean, I can't. I can't. Really? Yeah, we, we can't hear it. It's just a bunch of static. That? Yeah, I can't hear it over the static okay. that your headphones produce. Sounds I think none of us can hear it. All right, let's try it this time, All right? Because I've heard it before, so I don't, I don't really need it as much just yet. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what one might do in a program like Audacity. Uh, think podcast. So if you were recording some kind of So I want to point out a couple things about that. There was a lot of hiss at the beginning, right? So definitely, I would, that's the first thing we're going to have to get rid of. Hello, you hear that? everyone. So that stinks. Uh, we just call it noise. And what we want to do is learn about noise reduction because that noise is going to be through the entire track, right? And as well, it's, you're going to hear it worse anytime I pause the in between those pauses it's going to be overwhelming we got to get rid of the noise so that's one of the things the other thing about it is it sounds very tinny to me you know again it seems to be favoring the upper uh register of of the speaker's voice of my voice rather the low end of, of my particular voice so that's another thing that going to want to we're going to want to correct so two of the things that are coming up is how to clean up the sound particularly removing noise and the other one is called equalization so just bear with me. I hate that word equalization. It sounds like you're making things equal, but it's exactly the opposite of what you do <laughs> when you're equalizing. You're actually choosing what you like in that sound, exaggerating what has value and, and de-emphasizing what doesn't. So um, we're gonna actually be equalizing, but in the sense of enhancing. 
you know, making that voice sound better. I want you to see if you could hear the difference on this one. This is called Fixed Example. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what one might do in a program like Audacity. Uh, think podcast. So if you're recording some kind of podcast of brilliant ideas you wanted to share with the human race at large, what would you want to So what's going on there is I took most of the noise out. At the very beginning, it's close to silent. I added bass to the voice and reduced treble to the voice and uh, just made it sound more professional. Um, I want to just quickly say a little bit where a little bit about noise and removing noise. I've, um, I've heard people take out too much of the extra sound that I'm calling noise, and it makes it sound crazy artificial, like the person's talking in a vacuum. Uh, in fact, video people, uh, in your future, some of you are going to record what's called room tone. You hold up a mic in, in an empty room. And you actually use that sound in something recorded in the studio so that that sound sounds more live. So, you know, is room tone the same as noise? Probably not precisely, but they're related. So I didn't take the noise out completely. I didn't want it to sound like I'm talking in outer space. All right, I want you to hear the last one, which is where the corrected voice is added to um, adjusted music. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what one might do in a program like Audacity. Uh, think podcast. So if you're recording some kind of podcast of brilliant ideas you wanted to share with the human race at law. Does that sound OK on your end? Is my speaker's Sounds active. Better. What's that? Sounds a little bit better from what the first time I heard. That well, better. that's good. So, um, you know, again, this is all about fidelity. So I have a lot of concerns regarding that, you know, like what we're actually hearing. You know, if we can't hear the differences, then it's going to be kind of hard to move forward. But I have to tell you something just quickly. I, I'm so glad I'm not a full-time sound professor because they just got it bad. You know, there's just, it's just such a difficult thing to teach to large groups. Uh, there's so many variables and the noise in the room, et cetera. They're, they're, they, they, they strike me as a very nervous crowd of people and for good reason. <laughs> Shouldn't have said that. Anyway, so let's get started. This is what I'd like for everybody to do right away then. Find your copy of Audacity and open it. We're only going to use the one called Fix It and we're going to make our own files from there. Let me just move some stuff around. Wait a minute. So Audacity looks a little bit you know, like an electrical symbol almost, or a waveform between headphones. I'm gonna click that, get it started. You know, I think uh, if you've got your headphones in, I would like to see if, um, uh, by the way, if you're getting this welcome to Audacity, let me just interject for a minute. This does have access to quick help and the manual that kind of thing. And the, it, strangely though, this doesn't stay open. So we um, may talk about this again, it's just as a resource. But for right now, I could just click that little red button, put that window away. What I'm kind of curious about is this. When you plug in your headphones um, and make sure they're on, I'm curious to, to, to know what you're getting here. So mine says built-in output. And even when I plug in the headphones and, and um, I'm going to hear my built-in output. So once we get started, if any of you are not hearing your headphones, um, let me know and let's see if we could troubleshoot together, right? Uh, because really, this one here is about microphones, if you're plugging in an external microphone. And this one on the right is how you're listening, right? So I think it's typically built-in output. We'll see if there's a problem. All right. Now, the, the way to get started is this. We are talking about mixing and adjusting. Let me just take a take attendance quickly. Okay. Mixing and adjusting pre-recorded sound, right? So we have to bring the sound in. 
So just bear with me one minute. The difference between file menu open and file menu import. So we're going to be making in Audacity a .aup document. So in Photoshop, we made a lot of .psd, right, for Photoshop document. Those of you who use Word a lot are probably used to .docx for Microsoft Word or .doc. So this is .aup. File menu open means you want to open yesterday's uh, Audacity project, AUP, Audacity project. That means you already got busy and it's taken days to work on this thing. File menu import is you're bringing in a new part. So let's do that. Get everybody join me. File menu import, right? So let's be clear, not open. File menu import audio. Now you have to find your way to today's assets, right? So I um, downloaded mine two downloads, but I didn't move them like I usually do. So I don't confuse anybody. I'm not going to change it now. I'm going to let myself work in downloads. Find your way to wherever you put the folder and open the folder. And remember, it's the one called fixit.mp3 that you want, not the others. The others are already fixed. This is fix it. And let's click open. All right. First question, are you seeing the waveform like mine? All right. And the next thing that I'd like you to do is I want you to take notice of what the X key does on your keyboard. And I'm really interested to see if this is going to work for everybody or not. Uh, definitely on my Mac, it's the best way to play and pause. So, um, you should be able to um, click X. Hello, everyone. And have it play. Um, does that work for you? And you, everybody's hearing? Yep, hearing it. Yeah. All right. Great. So that's good news. Because huh. sometimes in the classroom, that could take up to a half an hour of troubleshooting people's headphones and stuff. So actually in slightly better shape. Hey there, Brandon. Do you, do you have something to say? Your box lit up. Hello? Yes, hi. How are you? Hello? Oh, uh, sorry. I'm just, just, just working. A lot of noise around me. No, no problem. No problem. I, I thought, I don't know. Anyway, try to involve people. All right. I want to go over a couple of quick things right away. Right. First off, could you try? We want, I would like you to try Command 1 on Macs or Control 1 on Windows. So I've got to be back inside there. And you're zooming in. So wherever the playhead is, and I I'm, say if I click here and I do Command Plus on, on Mac, I'm zooming in on that area, right? This should be Control-1 on Windows. Windows folks, if that stuff doesn't work out, you got to let me know. Now, I'm often going to have to do that because I'm looking for stuff on the timeline. I'd like you to compare that to Command-F or Control-F. Command-F and Control-F is going to help you stay sane. That means show me the full timeline. It's almost it's show me the whole thing. So if you're zo so zoomed in, you got lost, just do Command F or Control F to see the whole thing. I want to give you a peek at something on the menus, though. I'm not a big Professor, fan of menus. Yes, Jerson. Can I ask you something real quick? When yes, you sure. press when you press the X to play and pause, how do how do you make it to go all the way to the be beginning? You know, to go to the beginning in this program is the letter J. 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 Just by itself. Weird shortcut. And you know what's even weirder is that the controls, well, or you could use this. Do you see up in the top left? Uh, There's this. Oh, uh, the red. Little yeah, thing. just, you know, so here I've, I've clicked way out. I'm, I'm, I'm deep in it and I'm clicking that rewind button and it went back to frame one. You know, the only reason I'm not teaching a lot using um, the controls up there is uh, there's a lot of versions of play in this program, like play and loop, you know, or, or play and place the cursor so that you remember where you are. And there's all these different versions, so I, it, they get me nervous. So I'm teaching the ones that I use. So X is how I play. It leaves the cursor where I, you know, w w it also stops it and leaves the playhead there. You know, instead of rewinding automatically, which some of the other methods use. I want to give you a peek at something, though. 
transport is is what we're talking about now you know how to move the playhead around how to transport the playhead from the beginning to the middle to the end so you'll see a bunch of options here here's playing there's x that we've been using play stop and set the cursor i just love that one i don't use the space bar much because it keeps rewinding and there's good reasons people use that they often have to listen to the same thing over and over again but we don't really need that just now so i'm going to be sticking with the x key right and the letter j perhaps to rewind maybe i'll be using this button today we'll see okay so what i want you to do though is this if you're seeing the whole timeline that's good and if you're not command f or control f i want you to click way at the beginning right inside this sort of empty spot very very early you see the waveform gets really big suddenly but early on it's kind of flat and then i want to zoom in on it so i want you to click in that empty space and then do command one or control one a bunch of times right if you need to back up a little it's control three all these shortcuts are on today's handout by the way but you want to see a chunk of it i want to point something out this is not dead silence and in fact if i zoomed in enough so i'm going to exaggerate mine yeah not really i can't really see it there are tiny nicks on it that are creating the noise right so what i'm getting is is this so bear with me for a minute that's the first thing i want to get rid of right so i want to point something out to you the noise is all over this timeline right this track but we have to tell the computer here here's a sample of what i don't like and then we come back and say delete everything like it so you have to be zoomed in and then what i want you to do is highlight a bunch of that seemingly empty space. So you're literally clicking right inside and dragging over it. If it's not working, there's only one suspicion I have. If everyone would look at the top of my uh, Audacity, the default tool called the selection tool, that's the first of this little group of tools here. It looks like an I-beam, like you're gonna type, right? That's the tool I'm in. I'm not in these other nearby tools, which behave differently. I'm in that first tool. So it lets me click to place the playhead. It lets me press and drag. Did you highlight a bunch of the noise? Okay, so this is a very important step, one of the best things about Audacity. Could everybody join me? Check out the menus on the top. I want you to go to the menu called Effect. Now, I want you to look for noise, noise reduction. So it's sort of in alphabetical order. There's two parts, but the top part's in alphabetical order. We're going down to N, noise reduction. Click noise reduction. And I want you to notice there's this little button here that set, get, says get noise profile. You highlighted a little bit of noise first, right? That's a critical step. Now you click get noise profile and it goes away. That seems so empty. No, it's not though. Now the computer knows what noise is, and it's waiting for you to say, should I get rid of it? And, and how would you like me to get rid of it, right? So we have to go back in a moment. Bear with me. You highlight some noise, you get your noise profile, then you highlight the whole track. Do you guys remember Command A or Control A? Let's try that out. Give me one second. I think someone got locked out. All right. So guys, I'm gonna do that again, just very, very quickly. And um, I just wanna be fair, people's internet uh, connections are not always solid, so they get locked out. Quick repeat. I knew there was noise at the beginning. So I clicked the cursor in the noise and I used command one to zoom in. Once I got to see enough of it, I pressed inside and highlighted a bunch. And now I tell the computer about it, identify the noise. I came up here to effects, to noise reduction, and I click get noise. Sorry, get noise profile. Now we did command A. So this is where we were at. We're doing it because now I want the computer to look at the whole track. 
when I say, you know that noise I told you about? Take it out of the entire track. So please make sure you did command A and highlighted the whole track. Let's go back to the filter menu. Sorry, the effect menu, effect menu, noise reduction. Now I wanna say something about this part over here. These three numbers, noise reduction, sensitivity, frequency, they're really hard for me to understand, right? So I wanna share something with you. Uh, again, this is really out there in the audio um, engineers territory, but I wanna share something with you from my own handout. The default settings are 12, six and three respectively, right? So I wanna see if yours are set that way. So here I am back here. Uh, I reset mine before class, 12, six and three. Now with your headphones on, I'd like you to click preview and see if the noise seems quieter to you. So the preview button is letting you check it out. Give me one second, I'm plugging in because I need to test something. So what I was just doing was I lowered the first number, the actual noise reduction number to get closer to the original and compare it. And sure enough, it was a lot noisier, right? I went up to nine, which was a kind of conservative number and changed my mind. I raised it up to 14. I don't mind hearing a little bit because it's just gonna sound like natural space when we listen to later. Uh, I just don't want enough that the person's gonna perceive it as noise. So I'm going to go with 14 and I'm going to leave the other two numbers the same. So basically, the higher the number, the less noise there's going to be? Basically, yes. But I have to tell you, Jerson, I'd be really interested to, I have a, two friends that are audio engineers that, that I really want to kidnap for like an afternoon and, you know, really hit them with all the questions that I have. You know, sensitivity specifically, how's that going to work? Of course, this is all over YouTube anyway. I could always just type in audacity, noise reduction, sensitivity, and someone will, will be preaching ab about it. Right now I'm sticking with noise reduction. I'm gonna stick with 14. I'd like you to click okay. I'm going back inside. I'm gonna command F to see the whole timeline. I'm doing J to get back to the beginning, right? So command F or control F to see the whole time I command J to get back to the beginning. Um, I'm gonna ask everyone to, I'm gonna plug in my headphones. I'm gonna ask you to do the same. Check out a little bit more on your own to see how it sounds. Mine's quite a bit cleaner, still some noise at the beginning, but I'm gonna let it be for right now. Uh, I, I would wanna explore that more to find the exact magic number. I wanna tell you why I'm nervous about going all the way. What if I put in 20 or something? It does start to affect the voice. The voice has a kind of gravelly quality to it that can be perceived as noise also. So I don't wanna start losing anything. I could already hear a small amount, tiny amount of distortion in the voice. So I don't wanna go any further. All right. I wanna talk about the next thing that I would do. If you look at the waveform on your timeline, right? You'll see that it's got spikes and some parts of it are almost touching the ceiling. In fact, there's a little scroll bar down here so I can move over and see more of it. There are these red lines wherever the spikes are particularly high. I'm pretty sure those red lines are just supposed to be warning me. Hello you know, everyone. We're, we're, uh, we're today. Oh my God, I'm hearing myself. Um, we don't want the audio to hit the ceiling. 
right? That's going to rattle your speakers. It's going to create a different kind of distortion, right? Uh, literally distorting the sound. It's one of the biggest concerns that audio engineers always have. They want the volume to be big and rich, but just short of hitting that ceiling. So there's an easy way to fix it. All right, could everyone select the entire timeline with Command A again? You should see it highlight, it gets kind of lighter, right? Make sure you do that. We're gonna tell the whole thing to normalize. Again, strange words. I never did like the word normal. But anyway, normalize actually means raise up the volumes as high as you could safely get and lower anything down that's just plain too high. So let's go back to the effect menu and choose normalize. I wanna say just, uh, oops, wrong one, hang on. I wanna just take a quick peek at something. So here we are, again, I'm pointing out each, each step of the way that a lot of this information's on the handout. Minus one's the default, but if the audio was crazy high, you would go further down in the negative numbers, right? So negative five is actually less than negative one, right? But I think the default's gonna work great for us, so I'm gonna keep it. So all you have to do really is, well, you could preview it, but I don't think we'd learn that much. I'm just gonna click okay on this one. Did you see the waveform shrink, right? And it shrunk intelligently. I, I just wanna say a little bit about normalize. I like the feature, I use it a lot. I, I wanna be clear, at another school, I, I taught a experimental video and I was very proud of my students who often won awards at the school's uh, film festival. Uh, but the thing that worried me is at the festival, their volumes were all different. You know, it's like each person's movie was at a different volume setting. I, I don't think any of them were normalizing. So they had rather abnormal audio settings. Have you ever noticed that TV commercials are louder than the TV show? Yes. Right? right? Isn't that incredibly annoying? I mean, really, that should be against the law as far as I'm concerned. It's so manipulative. And frankly, it doesn't work. It just pisses us off and I don't want to buy the product. But anyway, right now we've normalized, we brought it into an audio, a standard volume or standard amplitude by using this feature called normalize. I like it. All right. I wanna to get to equalization, which is really kind of the most fun of all of these. Um, and I wanna say just a little bit about that. You know, if any of you are a really heavy audio files, just like you love your music, and maybe you're really into the music quality you listen to, uh, you might have seen equalizers or even have one. Um, the thing that's kind of weird is the devices that a lot of us use for sound uh, don't have equalizers anymore. And um, that's really problematic uh, for me. I use my iPhone to listen to music almost exclusively. And um, it, you know, it has this little thing, bass boost, treble boost, <laughs> stuff like that, classical music, and it makes an assumption of, of how to adjust sound for classical music. But I don't like assumptions. I, 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 I wanna be in the driver's seat. Um, if you know any older audiophile out there still listening to records and all that, they might have an equalizer with sliders. Let's see what we can do that's more like uh, that. You know, the old stereos used to have this equipment, um, but at least we have it in Audacity. So here we are in Audacity. Again, you don't want a little bit highlighted right now. You want the whole thing highlighted. So Command A makes it bright and light. That means it's selected. Could everyone join me yet again at the effect menu? Effect menu. And then it says graphic EQ. And I'd like you to click on graphic EQ. Now, the sliders on the left represent the base the low notes. So if you needed to exaggerate the low notes, you're gonna be hitting these sliders on the left. On the other hand, if you wanna exaggerate the high notes, it's all the way on the right. And um, again, I'm, I'm hoping I've got some music, big time music fans in here, but you know, the drummer has got drums that are a different um, uh, depth. You know, the, the big drum on the floor or the, the pedal drum has got the lowest sound, for example but they have a drum called a snare that's got like a shh sound and the cymbals like you hear a lot in rock and roll and jazz, 
right? Very high. So if, if I don't have these up, I'm not gonna hear the cymbals particularly well. If I don't hear these, I'm not gonna hear the low notes. Professor? Yes. Mine are all in the middle. I don't know if yeah, I'm Yeah, yeah, mine, mine just remembers my setting because I was working on my own voice. Oh, so okay, I'm okay. Just... Mine out. The ledgers are in the middle. So just, just making sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, that's just so that you get to make your own choices. I, I just want to say something real quickly. You know, you can't hear your own voice uh, all particularly well. So when it's recorded, it's always kind of shocking. So I've done just enough of this to get to know my own voice and, and what, what makes it most useful to me. And um, I don't have a lot in the middle. My voice is all bottom and top. You know, it's, an, it's odd in that way. Uh, one, one sound person who worked for a radio station once said, you know, I could use your voice. I, I was very flattered. But when he explained to me why I remembered, and I, and I tend to exaggerate exactly what the, this, this person had noticed. So that's why you're seeing the shape that you're seeing on mine. I'm going to click flatten though. I want you to do an experiment. I want you to take, I don't know, maybe six of these on the left and bring them to the top. Two, four, five, six. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna go with seven. So I, that's like a good twenty-five percent of the entire range. This is the equivalent of all the white keys, all the keys on a piano, but all the way down to the bottom, right? I'm gonna, uh, professor, I have a problem. Yes. What's uh, that? So right here on my effects uh, menu, I don't see graphic EQ at all. Really? Do you see anything that says equalize on it? Uh, I see like equalization and then over here, just like a graph just shows up. Give me uh, one second there. Wait, I think did I might have. Did might you have just, uh, did you just get audacity or did you have it from the past? No, I've been having it for a while. For a while. So that's why the, the last version didn't have this precise feature, but it had something just like it. So yours is just called equalization? Yeah, equalization. Who's that? I'm doing this from memory now. <laughs> there should be a bottom a button once you're inside on the bottom left. Call EQ type. EQ type. Yeah. Can you tell me what it says? It says draw and graphic. So when I choose graphic, graphic, I see the levels. Great. All right. So it's pretty much the same as what we're all looking at. Perfect. All right. So uh, let me get back in there myself. Give me a minute. Small change. All right. I'm flattening mine. So um. Again, if you've done yours, and just let me catch up with you. I'm going to ask you to plug in and click preview to see if you can hear it. should be a substantial difference in the amount of bass. In fact, if you want to exaggerate it, just to take this a step further, right, you could take all the others to the floor. Doesn't take long. You'll hear what it sounds like with just bass. I'm going to plug in and check it out myself. You could do the same using preview. So one's are getting very, very muffled. There's no clarity without the higher notes. And frankly, I don't want every band of my low notes to all be up against the ceiling. And that's why what you saw on mine before looked like a curve. So I let the lowest note be ramped up and the next lowest to be kind of ramped. And then as it got closer to the middle, I reduced. So what I'm gonna do is this, and you're welcome to try the same. I'm going to create a kind of curve of base that's going to look something like this. And I, I'm going to keep going here, right? When I get toward the middle, 
I'm going to let that flatten out a little bit. So that basically I'm going to make sure that my midtones are at a fairly consistent um, volume, not really volume, exaggeration, a consistent quality. But I'm going to start raising up the treble too. And if I go too high on those high notes, those treble notes, I might hear more hiss. I might start sounding like uh, I'm in agony. <laughs> so once you've tried it out again, plug in, quick preview and see if you like what you hear. Those high treble notes, I knew they were going to be awful. I just wanted to hear it for myself. Hello, everyone. Uh, I, I think I probably interrupted what you were listening to. I'm going to be quiet for about half a minute, minute. So I hope you found something that you find uh, appealing, and it really is about appeal. Um, your voice is gonna need to be treated differently than mine, and, and everybody who you might record would need to be treated differently. I think someone with a really good ear could figure out how to bring out the most appealing elements of a specific voice in the way that a really good makeup artist won't treat every face the same. You know, they could figure out what's best for that face. Uh, we're kind of doing that with the voice. So I'm making the argument that my voice does need high notes, but not so much. Maybe reduce them a little bit from its natural high and let the bass notes come up. If you feel reasonably happy with yours, you can click OK. We have a problem. You saw the waveform change, and I don't know about yours, but mine's giving me alerts all over the place. I've got red lines all over the place showing me that my normalized audio ain't so normal anymore. And at this particular stage, I'm going to have to find a different way to deal with that. I want to introduce you to something that's a little bit more complex, at least it is for me. Um, and I'm only recently become a fan of it, and it's called compression. So um, let me diverge for a second, right? Compression is a common technique where you compress the highs and the lows to take them a little closer to the middle. Now that could ruin stuff if one gets carried away. So I've been very shy about it over the years and I never had any luck with it in Audacity or even in um, Logic, which is my other audio program. But um, I, I think I mentioned in passing that I'm a bass player. And it's very common for electric bass players to have a compression pedal or an amplifier that has compression. So I decided to go at it a different way and explore what the pedal does. And um, now I'm in love with my compression pedal and it helps me understand exactly what to do with the voice. So here's the gist of it. Just use your imagination with me for a minute. When you hear someone talk about the bass, you've got your own image in your head of, of what a bass guitar sounds like. You know, if you're a jazz fan, you hear that. If you're whatever kind of music, funk, you've got that. Um, and we hear the, you know, we're imagining like it's all low end, but it isn't. So very often on a, on a bass, the bass player's high notes are reached with the pinky and they, they sound a little weaker. Um, compression is actually gonna help me uh, make sure that those don't um, squeak or squeal. Uh, they're a little bit supported, those high notes. And if the bass notes are too much, it compresses them a little. So we have a choice. We could try the compressor now, because it's, you know, to bring it all toward the middle a little bit, or we could normalize again. I want to try, by the way, people don't agree about this. 
it is a legitimate choice. Some people will do both. Let's see what the compressor is like. I might scrap it, but let's give it a shot. So again, if your track is not highlighted, Command A again. I wanna show you on the handout for a minute. I put it in gray because I don't always use it. And I didn't want you to think you should use it all the time. But you notice I added these numbers here that gave me good results for voice. And I'm gonna be peeking at these in a minute. Give me one second. I think someone again might've been locked out. All right. So I'm going back to Audacity. I'm making sure the whole thing's highlighted. And I'm going one more time to the effect menu. And I'm looking for compressor. You know, I do think this is going to be hard for us to hear with the tiny preview that we get offered, you know, with the preview button. So I'm going to ask for a leap of faith. We're just going to punch in numbers. I just want to compare mine for a second. Minus 13, minus 80, 3 to 1. 20.21. All right, so these are the numbers I'm gonna ask you to um, imitate if yours are set differently. The threshold set to minus 13, the noise floor at minus 80, ratio three to one, the attack time is 0.20, release time is one. I wanna be really, really honest about this. This is crazy complex. I've watched so many YouTube videos on this one subject from music people to voice people to just sound engineers. And it, it is a little intense, but let's see if we get any mileage out of it. I'm just gonna go right ahead and click okay. I wanna see what happens to the waveform visually. Well, I'm really glad I didn't normalize, right? Because this took everything away from the ceiling, right? So I know I'm not gonna be blasting my speakers out. At this point, I'm going to plug in my headphones like you guys, and I'm going to play some of this to see how far I've gotten. I want to tell you what I'm happy with and what I'm not, right? I wish there was a little bit noise, a little more noise reduction, but I'm afraid to do it because it connects to something I don't like. Here and there, there's a very subtle, nearly robotic squeal coming out of that voice. Uh, any musicians in here might have heard what flange sounds like. This sounds like flange. And um, I, I, for the last year, I've been wanting to ask an audio engineer about what's causing it because I don't think it's in the original recording but it's robust, it, uh, it's attention getting, it's got a rounder, fuller sound and that I do like. I wanna come back and take a, a look at what we've got left here. So it says here, you could possibly normalize again. There's another similar feature called amplitude. I'm gonna be the guinea pig and see if it's a good idea because I'm not really sure. It just looks like a lot of the volume so far from the ceiling I'm afraid that it's gonna sound different than anything else that might be broadcast alongside me. You know, other commercials, another newscast or another podcast. So I'm gonna go have a look. I'm back inside. I'm highlighting the whole thing. I'm gonna normalize again, right? The only no reason I'm doing that is this is so far from the ceiling. I'm really kind of worried about how it's gonna sound on different people's machines, how they set their volume. It, it might be surprising. So anyway, I'm gonna go back to effect and I'm gonna do normalize again. I'm just gonna accept the default, pumped it up. At the moment, I'm, rec I'm recommending that you do the same. Recommendation, not an absolute. You know, I do wanna add something uh, to be prudent. I haven't suggested that we save even once, right? And that means if we crash, we'd have to do the whole thing all over again. That's kind of nasty. I think we better save now. So let's go to the file menu. 
and simply go to save project. I want to say a quick word about save project versus save project as. You know, the first time I'd always say save project, I said the same in Photoshop. Later on, if I like the version I have, but I want to try some crazy stuff, I'll save it. Then I'll do save project as and give it a version two kind of name, right? So they'll be separate. I'll have two different versions. Right now, let's just do save project. First time we're saving it. It's an AUP. I'm going to call it fix it underscore and today's date 10 dash 20 dash 20. So this is the one that I'm currently fixing on this specific date. So if I do other versions, I'll tell them apart. You could call it fix it version one or something like that, V1. You know, whatever works for you. I'm saving it to today's folder so I don't get lost. I'm double checking that I'm in the right place. And I'm gonna simply click save. We're not done yet, but frankly, we sh I should have had you do that within the first few minutes. All right, let's move on a bit. I wanna say we're not gonna fade this in or fade out because it's a voice and I don't want the voice to get loud and then suddenly trail off into the business, right? It's not what I'm after. So we have enough time to see if we could squeeze in some music. Are you guys up for trying it with me? So let's go for it. I wanna get back into Audacity. Now, remember we did file menu import to get the original sound. If we do it again, it's gonna add another layer for us, right? And the layers here are called tracks, but just like layers in Photoshop, so let's go to the file menu, file menu, import, audio. This is how you started today. File menu, import, audio. It should take you to the same folder. And I want you to choose Amazing Grace Short dot MP3. All right. Now, honestly, I really prefer all instrumental music behind a voice. So this is not perfect, but it's pretty good, right? There is a bunch of audio, but we're gonna have to work out a whole bunch of things. Still, it's got a quality to it that works very well uh, anyway as a background. So let's just get to know this more complex timeline for a minute. The track on the top is the one you've been working on. The new track is beneath it, right? This bar in between can be moved, kind of yellowish bar, right? So you might want to move it so you could see more of a lower track. If you're not sure if you're seeing the whole thing, do Command F. Because remember, like if you're way zoomed in, we're not going to know what we're doing. So I want to make sure we can see the whole thing. I'm pretty sure you can already see the whole thing. Now, for one, you see it's way too long. I think I'm going to deal with the length last. What I want to do now is play two issues with you, and they're both about volume. So I'm going to ask you to, to listen to me uh, and not play it on your own. It's way loud, right? And it's easy to lower the volume, but the problem is I want the beginning to be that loud because it's got these cool drums. So listen for this for a minute. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what one might. So there's a lot of competition between the music and the speaker and you can't allow that. But at the very beginning, I want you to hear the drums and how cool it is before the first words are said. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we want... So here's my problem. I want to keep those drums at that volume and I want to lower the rest. So we're going to have to do this in a, with a very cool feature um, involving something like keyframes, which is a subject that's going to keep coming back the rest, the rest of the semester. Could you all look at this tiny toolbar on the top? So I mentioned to you that this thing that's like an I-beam is the default tool. And we're going to have to get back to it. It's called the selection tool here. But to the right of it is a tool called the envelope tool. 
So I know that's a little hard to see. I'm talking about this little tool right here, the envelope tool. Could you watch this? First off, I think I have to go back to the selection tool for a minute and click toward the beginning and then zoom in. You might wanna join me on that. Get back to the selection tool, click in that little part, those are the drums and command one a few times. So one, two, three, four, those are the four drum hits that I wanna preserve. To do it, I'm gonna switch over to that envelope tool and watch this. This is a little sticky, right? So watch closely. There's this, this um, yellow bar with a bluish bar beneath it. And I'm gonna attempt to click right here. And it created an anchor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring that down. Oops, sorry. Let me bring it back up. I'm gonna click there. If you did already, that's fine. I need another one at the beginning though. Now that little dot, I made one at the beginning, one right after the drum beats anchor the current volume. I'm going to do this. I'm going to take this one down and pinch it quite a bit. Now we're going to have to go another step, but I want you to hear what just happened when I play it back for you, right? And I'll do the whole thing over, right? Uh, if necessary, I'm hitting J to rewind, hitting X to play it. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what one might do in a program like Audacity. So what I got is I got to keep the drums fairly loud and make sure that the rest was fairly quiet, but I want the drums to be even louder. Plus, I kind of like the first chord that the piano hits. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to Professor, take can, Professor, can you repeat that part of how you shrink in? Yes. Let me that me, thing. Absolutely. Let me command Z a bunch. And I don't mind if you guys want to do the same. I command Z to before any of those anchors were there. All right, let me be very specific. This is the tool you have to have, right? It's saying here that the F2 on the keyboard would get me there. I'm gonna try that. Sure enough. But you, can you find the tool? Yes. All right, now. Wait, what tool? This tool's called the envelope tool. It's just to the right of the selection tool. Got it. Okay. So this is the one that creates those anchors and lets you move them for volume. So look what I'm going to do this time. I'm going to Amazing Grace. It's the lower tracks. It's left and right speakers. But right over here, right against this bluish edge, I click once. And if I accidentally moved it, I'm just going to drag it back to the ceiling. I'm going after the four drum beats, right? A little bit further. And I'm going to click again. This time I'm gonna take this one and drag it down. And I'm gonna pinch it till it's real tight. Now I'm gonna make one more correction, but I would like you to hear this. Hello everyone. Uh, today we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what so the music's quiet. one might do in a- The music's quiet, the drums weren't. I want the drums louder. And the reason that I'm having a problem is the volume starting to drop right away on the drums, but I don't really want the volume to drop that quickly. So look what the solution is going to be. I'm going to click in between on that purplish bluish line about here. And I'm going to bring this one back up. So I got three anchors. I'm going to bring it all the way up. So what's going on here is I've anchored the drums to be at maximum volume for as long as I can get away with. I could even slide them over if I want, you know, to adjust when the volume changes come. So now I've got really the loudest drums available at the moment. And then just after, while that first chord is being hit, it drops down to the volume I'm gonna keep for the entire rest of the track. So I'm gonna hit J, play it one more time. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we want to clean up some sound as a little example of what. And the cool thing about it with these three anchors, I could continue to readjust it. You know, um, maybe I tweak that a little bit. You know, maybe I raise this volume a little bit. Right. So I'm just trying to use the three anchors instead of making more. Did you guys get in, get anything out of that? Did it work for you? 
So there are other ways to change the volume of the whole track. And sometimes you're gonna to wanna to do that. This one had this really sweet moment with that introduction for the, for the podcast, that introduction for the radio show with those drum beats. We got one more thing we need to fix. We need to trim the end and then output a useful file. So I'm gonna ask you to do Command F because you're probably zoomed in with me. Oops. You know what? I just wanna say one more thing. That tool's dangerous. As soon as I'm done with it, I'm gonna click back to the selection tool. Otherwise I might add anchors all over the place. So I'm gonna go back to the selection tool. Then I'm gonna command F to make sure I can see the whole thing. And we can see that Amazing Grace, the music is very long, right? Very, very long. In fact, if you wanna back up even more, we could try command three, hang on a second there, to back up even more or control three. But basically, I just want to be sure you could see the end of both tracks. All right, how do you delete? Make sure you're in the selection tool. That's the first and most important tool. We're done with the envelope tool. Come to the end of Amazing Grace, drag over the part you want to get rid of. Now, don't line it up. I'd like the music to last a little longer than the speaker. So I'm going to back up to about that. I'm going to press delete. So what I'm saying is you could have taken it out till they match exactly. But you know, when someone speaks, they're done. The music might continue for a couple seconds and fade out. And that's what I'm after. So I can keep command Z, by the way, like we've done in other programs. So I'm going to take out about this much. I want you to hear something before anyone joins me on the next step. Some fades and maybe some additional features while we're at it. Okay, let's see what we can do with this audio. This is your tour guide talking to you from New York City, New York. I like the length. Maybe a little long. But this is going to be the worst part. Can't have that. So I'm going to trim just a little bit off of mine, just a little bit. And now I want to do a fade out. All right. Did you trim your music? Because it can't go on forever. Wait, how did you trim? Well, I highlighted the end that I didn't want, and I just pressed delete. Did it work? You said press delete, I don't see. Yeah, press delete on your keyboard. Oh, my bad. Yeah, you just highlight a little and just find the delete key on the keyboard and just delete it. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. So now I want you to imagine where should the volume of the music start to drop? Now, in my opinion, it should start to drop before the speaker's even finished. You know, he's saying his goodbye and already the volume's dropping. Right? Even if it lasts a little longer, it started dropping early. So look what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Hang on a second there. I got carried away. All right. I want you to highlight again from the tail end, but go where you'd like the volume to start dropping. So in other words, I'm surpassing the end of the audio above it where the voice is. And I'm, I'm gonna say, listen, I want all of this to be a fade out, this whole chunk to fade out. You know, by the way, we could do this manually with the envelope tool, but I just don't want to. I wanna to show you the other way, right? So we faded out that chunk. This is gonna go from full volume down to zero. You highlighted it. Let's go back to the effect menu. So much good stuff in the effect menu. Effect menu and fade out. You can see it pinch the waveform. And I'm gonna go first and then I'm gonna be quiet so you could test yours. All right, I'm actually not gonna plug in though because that's been a problem. In New York.
nice, All right? So I just want to point out that uh, if, if we had time, which we don't, uh, I would want to plug myself in and hear that. I want to make sure there's no clicks or odd other sounds. Uh, since I didn't fade out the voice and there's a little noise at the end, I'm a little worried that I could hear the noise go off. Right? And I would be able to tell if I plugged in, but right now I don't want to take that time. Uh, could you save again? So Mac, Command S, Windows, Control S, or File Menu, Save. It's not going to ask any questions because you already named it and gave it a home. It's just updating it. I want to talk about output. So say you needed this for an animation, right? Um, it, I've animated people using my voice a, a number of times, so it would be really fun to try that. I have to get it out of Audacity, right? So the question becomes, what's a good output file? Well, I'm going to go with MP3. You know, MP3 uh, works um, in um, Adobe Animate, and it also works in Adobe Premiere, which we're going to do next week, a video program. Um, so it seems like MP3 is good, a real useful one for us. All right, make sure your AUP is saved. And let's go to the file menu together. File menu, export, export MP3. I've never used an AUG file. They must be popular because they're showing up everywhere. Right, Wave is kind of old school, uh, not as common as it used to be. Are you all seeing export MP3? All right, let's just click yes. that in. So um, my Mac uh, shows me extensions, and you can see that it's using the same name, .mp3. Um, if people on Windows changed your default settings, you might be seeing .mp3 also. Uh, but it is an mp3. You see down here where it says file type, it should be saying mp3. I'm not going to make any changes at all. I'm just checking that it's going to the right folder. And it is. So I'm simply going to click save. It's warning me that the mp3 is going to be mixed down. In other words, it's not editable, right? It's going to be crunched, finished, like a JPEG. You know, it's not the PSD, right, with all the layers in it, right? It's like the JPEG, this is the output file, the one I can give away, one I could upload. So I'm gonna click okay, that's fine with me. You know, I've never used this. This is a way to hide kind of information in there. I just ignore it and just click okay. Now, if you go find your folder, you'll see what's in it. Now, I only have three minutes left and if anyone has to go, I understand. Right, uh, I'm only going to spend a few, few like five minutes on this. I'm going to do two minutes over. There's the MP3. Hello, everyone. Uh, today we want to clean up some sound. And I hope it sounds better on my headphones. Give me a minute because my my computer speaker is definitely not liking it. I want to make sure I didn't do it. Headphones, though. Uh, think pod. This is the AUP file if you wanted to work on it tomorrow, right? So that's the one you double click to come back to all your tracks, right? This data file cannot be deleted. So I want to mention something about that. Audio and video often have dependent folders with all kinds of weird parts on the inside. It's just the way the program thinks as it makes parts based on special effects any kind of odd manipulations to the original content. If you ever wanted to give this to anybody to work on, I would give them the entire root folder. So they have access to uh, the original, original file, to the data folder that was generated by Audacity, and the AUP. This other stuff, yeah, amazing grace. You know, So I would just give them the root folder and say, open the AUP. All right. Does anybody have any questions for me about output or any of the above? I want to show you guys something. I, I only got one minute left officially, and I, I, I did uh, arrange a, a meeting um, with someone right after, so I'm not going to take long. I don't want to make him wait. Uh, but um, I want to say something based on the handout, so have a look with me.
So there's no new homework at this moment, but there's a couple things I want you to see on the handout. One says, look here. This is where you can get free legal sound clips to use in Audacity or anywhere you want. I've used it just a couple times, but I really liked it. The sound was really high quality and wonderfully legal. The other thing that I want to point out, if you'd like to hear a different teacher teaching a lot of the same material, uh, this excellent tutorial on Audacity uh, is something really worth your time. It's about 20 minutes. So it's a much shorter version of what we just did. Plus, it includes how to record, right? So um, I just want to say a quick word about that. Man, I would love it if some of you told me, that, you know, Thursday or next week, yeah, I recorded myself and I did this all, you know? Uh, so this would be the best place to see how to record. It's very, it's near impossible for me to teach it with like 20 students um, at once. So um, I've never been able to wrap my mind around that. And uh, some other teacher I know really similar that they may make you record at home, you know, prepare it. Uh, but if you're interested in seeing how to do it, it's very early in that, in that teacher's excellent video. Um, and you could do it right on your computer one last word about recording yourself. Please find the quietest room in your, in your home. Some of you don't have a quiet room. I understand. The bathroom? I don't know. You know, kitchens can be a problem because if you have fluorescent lights, the fluorescent lights make a lot of noise that you don't even hear consciously anymore because you've heard it so many times. It, it, when people make movies, they take out fluorescent lights, they unplug refrigerators noisy things, refrigerators. Um, I intentionally used a medium noisy room of my house just to see how it would go. So it was next to the kitchen, but not in it. And I got away with it. That's the audio you just used, right? So you try to find the quietest room and you don't have a sound booth at home, I don't think, right? And uh, if you want, watch that video, learn a little bit more about recording. So listen, Thursday, we're doing more audacity, but that's probably about it. We're going to work on a spoken um, poem, a uh, kind of wonderful poem that's about rain. And we're going to bring in rain. And if we're not satisfied that, we're going to bring in thunder and really kind of make a very dramatic recitation out of this wonderful Mary Oliver poem uh, on Thursday. So I'll see you all on Thursday. Guys, listen, I, I do have to uh, apologize for kicking people out. I usually invite people for the after party <laughs> where people share it, hearing each other's questions. I, I, I uh, have a private meeting um, uh, you know, with someone. So I'm gonna say goodbye to everybody right now. Um, goodbye, everybody. Uh, the, the one person who's waiting for me, Isaiah, just hang out, would you? And uh, we're gonna give everyone a chance to log off. I'll see you all Thursday. Feel free to email me with questions about anything. I'm pretty confident I'll get to them tomorrow. See you guys. All right, take care, Professor. Bye. And you actually do have a radio voice. Sometimes I do my best. Uh, sorry, Professor, I have a question. Okay. Uh, the my core audio it only shows that I only have mic uh, book air microphone, only one choice. Could Could you say the whole thing again one more time? Uh, at my uh, uh core audio right uh it only has micro macbook air microphone one choice okay so um core audio is all i get on my mic also uh um we're talking about the one that says built-in output you don't really yeah. need to, to change that I don't okay think, i think you're okay okay all right, all right. All right. thank you professor bye-bye Hey, Isaiah, let me make sure I stop recording, okay? Goodbye, YouTube. See you next week. Next class, I should say.